Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to look at in this video the, are the choices for my VMware replacement plan. And I'm going to talk about the three options. Two of them are only going to be able to be in production for me. Um, and we'll talk about why the third one's not going to be able to be in production. So let's hop right into it. So I have it narrowed down to two production choices. So my two production choices are either going to be Proxmox, and I chose Proxmox because it uh, meets my need of being able to back up my VMs easily, being able to have a cluster of servers, and be able to move VMs seamlessly between the servers uh, or you know, my servers where my resources exist. Um, I can also buy commercial support if I need it, but if I don't need commercial support, I can just run the product. So that was favorable. The other reason that I chose this is because it supports single disk files over two terabytes. And... I have virtual machines where I have single disks over two terabytes. We'll get to the other option that doesn't support that here in a second that I'm sure you're all going to tell me about. So my next choice is Harvester by Susi, Seuss. And I can also get commercial support for this. It meets all of my needs, just like Proxmox with the virtual networking and, and being able to move VMs between hosts, the support for the files over two terabytes, all those things. And I, I can get commercial support if I need it. I am going to run Proxmox and Harvester, possibly in short demos, unless as we're digging in and we're doing more analyzing that there is something that is a showstopper. But I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to run Harvester and Proxmox side side by side or in a demo environment for like a week at a time and do tests to see which one I'm going to end up with. Now, I know a lot of you are saying, why aren't you going with XCPNG? Well, XCPNG meets most of those requirements, uh, but I can't have, well, I, I can and I can't. I can't have um, virtual disks over two terabytes in size if I want to use all the things that make virtualization advantageous, such as, uh, you know, backing up uh, my device, moving between, um, easily between hosts, things like that. There's, I, I know what you're saying, like, well, you can do it, you can use XCPNG, just use RAW, and uh, that would get me over that limit, but I lose a lot of the effectiveness that comes with um, virtualization. Now, uh, Citrix, which this product is based off of, is addressing that, but I don't know that they're going to uh, be in a hurry to release that uh, um, the disk setup that will allow us to have those disks over two terabytes. Now, I greatly simplified that, and I'm sure people are going to harp on that in the comments, whatever. But that the two terabyte file limit with all the advantages of running VMs, that's what is, um, that's what's stopping me from using X XCPNG in production. I'll probably run it in the lab. Maybe I'll virtualize it just so I can stay up on it because I know a lot of customers are going to use it because they're not going to have that two terabyte limit. And uh, we've already had a lot of requests to move people off of VMware. We've also had requests to move people off Hyper-V. Um, so this whole conversation with Broadcom and VMware has kind of reawakened this entire conversation around virtualization, what you're using, what you're paying. And, you know, if you're staying with VMware, your prices are going up. The way that they're licensing it is, is changing, right, which is what's driving up some of those licensing costs. It's just like everything else right now. The prices are. Whoosh. But once again, to recap real quick, for production, I've got it narrowed down to Proxmox or Harvester. And I know there's a lot of purists in the comments that just want to see me, you know, use KVM and some other solution. But the problem is I can do that. I can 
come up with it, I can run it. But uh, the way that I work is that I don't work with people who may be at the technical caliber of you who are suggesting that. I don't necessarily work with people who have the amount of experience that I have. And if I walk out in the street and get hit by a bus, they have to be able to manage this. And something with a nice UI uh, with support is the way that I have to proceed. So while I would love to be that command line purist and do, you know, patch this thing together, I need a product that is polished like this for support reasons and for ease of use. So go wild in the comments with that, if you will. And uh, make sure you give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, and uh, share. Follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below, along with links, affiliate links, and a Patreon link if you'd like to support the channel. And if you need IT consulting, you need to move your virtual infrastructure off of VMware. Some people are uh, doing a three, did a three-year renewal right before this, so they've got a little bit of time. Some people don't have time. If you've been running the free version of ESXi, it is no longer supported, will no longer be produced. Um, also, if you were running the free version and you did not get your product key before they cut it off, guess what? At the end of your evaluation, your VMs aren't going to boot. Um, and, uh, yeah, then you're, then you're in a pickle, but if you need help moving your virtual infrastructure, any other it needs, such as voice over IP security, storage, uh, networking, all those things, go over to willyhow.com, fill out that content form and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Once again, I'm Willie. I'm glad we're on this journey together. There'll be more videos on it. And as always, I will see you in the next video.